Hello, Naomi here. I'm here to do a video on dyeing appliques. I've recently done. Oops, my camera's I'm upside down on my camera, so it's a bit weird. So I recently did this card, and I dyed the applique, and I dyed the baker's twine. So um, I did promise to do a video showing how I did that. So here we are. For this method you will need a non-stick craft mat and or a non-stick mat. I recommend having one of these because I understand they do have some heat resistance and you if you're like me and you're impatient you're going to want to use your heat gun. So don't use your self-healing um, craft mat like the green ones because they will buckle. Okay, so I've got a bunch of applique, so I'm going to start off with the butterfly and show you exactly how I made the one that I used on the card. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the same colours or not, but we'll see. Um, and I've got a few other appliques, and I've got the Dacre's Twine. I love the Dacre's Twine. Okay, this is very Vanilla. It's a solid colour. Um, I need to check, I think it might be cotton. And it's got a good thickness to it as well. Now, I love this because I can dye it to suit whatever project I'm working on. So, at the moment, I've got the Brights collection in ink refills. And it gives me quite a wide range. And I will be increasing that. I'm, I've got some ink pads that um, I can do so much more. I'm having fun with the inkers. But, enough dabbling. Let's do one. Okay, so non-stick mat. If you're worried about inky fingers, gloves, I usually forget to put them on. Tissue of kitchen roll. I find tissues actually cheaper than kitchen roll, so I tend to use that. You'll need some water, so I use a spritzer bottle. It's easiest. And if, like I said, you're impatient, heat gun. So I'm going to come out a bit wider. Okay, let me the that off if you guys to see what I'm doing. Let's move these off. So let's start with the butterfly and I'll show you exactly what I did. Um, I used Tempting Turquoise. You want one little dot like that. You need so little. Don't be tempted to put loads, and I'm already covered in link. Look, and I've got the gloves right there. Once again, I forgot to put them on. Get the spritz. And then dunk it. It's actually good to get it quite saturated because then you know the colour's going through. I'm not worried that it's slightly pale there because I'm going to go around the edges with another colour. And like each time you do this, they will be slightly different. Okay, so when you're happy... That's not completely dry, but it's a bit drier than it was. And as I was saying, colours will bleed into other colours and make new colours. So that's something to be aware of. Let's go with vanilla mango like I used. Actually, no, let's go darker this time. This is rich razzleberry. Which is darker than the one I used last time. So I don't know what colour this is going to end up. Once again, spritz. I'll give it a bit of a shake just to mix it evenly. And I'm going to dip. Dry. 
Okay, in case I didn't say this before, most appliques have got a nylon base, so they might be polyester or something else that's like a plasticky or nylicky base. Um, you can get cotton um, appliques that these are likely, if you're using a heat tool, to shrink. So just be aware of that. So as you saw, when I dabbed, it took some of the intensity of the colour away. But it's just play with it. You can re-ink if you, if you wanted it darker. You just keep dipping till you're happy and drying. I want a bit more blue in the middle. Rather than what have you watch me dry that out completely, what I'm going to do is put that to one side. And let that dry off. And we'll have a play with another one. Um, right, the reason I don't use the ink refills neat is because if you sing when they go on the mat they are very dark I don't know actually let's find out I don't actually know what happens if you apply them directly to an applique this is daffodil delight so let's see what happens that is quite dark And then I'm going to go with pumpkin pie. I've not tried this, so it's going to be a surprise to all of us what happens at the end. And then I'm going to go around the edge with Old Olive. I'm trying not to squeeze too much and to spread it out because like, the more ink you use, the more intense the colour. And I do plan to spritz this with water. That's a very intense green, considering that's that's the green it's supposed to be. That's a very intense green on there. You could probably get another leaf and dab it on the top where I spritz it like that and get the colour to transfer off. It'd be less of a waste of ink. But again, I'm not going to fully dry that one. Let's see. Now, on the one I put on the card, I've linked nine sides, so added rhinestones. You could add pearls, you could add glitter. Um, I'm guessing once they're completely dry, you could add embossing powders, I'm not sure. Let's try another one with the old olive, but without... Applying it direct. This is need playtime. I love to play. The more water you add, the thinner it's going to get, so... The more diluted the colour, I should say. Okay, let's go for 
something bright. This is Tangerine's Hango. If you are a very controlled person, um, this may not be the technique for you because you cannot control really where the ink is going to bleed for, bleed to I should say. It's going to go where it's going to go. You can control the colour a bit more if you dry between adding new colours. It's not going to merge as much. And you that left over red. Bottom. Um, go back to the Razzleberry. Um, some Bermuda Bay. Oh, that the new the day is stunning. Right, so what I'm going to do? Oh, that was a waste. That was a waste. Don't do that. What if I do the new the day? I like the new the day. Let's get that one back. And Melanando. Don't put your colours too close to each other on the craft mat or they might just merge and get muddy. Okay, this is the very vanilla baker's twine that I'm dipping in the new today. I'm rotating it through the ink just to make sure it's completely coated. I mean, when I did this before, it was just one solid colour, so it was easy. It was to match something I was making. So I did the um, the solid baker's twine in the same colour as the cardstock I used in the background. So I'm going to clean up a bit and then I'm going to get everything dry and then I'll add some pictures at the end of this video to let you know how that all finished off. Thanks for watching. Oh, I'll be putting a link to my Stamping Up shop and to XES below this video. 
so everything you can see here you'll be able to find if you want to get hold of it and um, happy crafting talk to you soon bye